Yes, I do. Right here on Early Edition with it's uh, 5.31 PI, bringing Pacific people together. It is six minutes past 11 o'clock. Alana Matamaru-Smith currently works at Te Pukarea Society, an environmental NGO based in the Cook Islands. Her areas of interest include biodiversity, waste management, as well as seabed mining and its potential environmental impacts. Alana holds an undergraduate degree in environmental management and master's in conservation biology. We cross now to the Cook Islands and we say kia orana, Alana. Thank you so much for making time to have a chat with us this morning. Kia orana, ite, and, um, thank, uh, kia orana to our listeners too. And thank you for um, having me today on the Sunday here in uh, the Cook Islands. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes, mm. absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. The pleasure is all ours. Now, uh, tell us, Alana, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your background and uh, what it was uh, that made you uh, go down the path of uh, environmental management and conservation biology. Yeah, definitely. Um, interesting question. It's it's more so i feel like the job found me if anything um i was coming out of high school and thinking you know what do i want to study at university i don't want to go and get a degree and end up wasting three years and doing a completely different job so i was thinking you know what is currently um in the need right now where am i like where's there likely going to be a lot of jobs available and at that moment i just thought instantly the environment the environment is going to require a lot of work in the future and i think it was that moment and that realization um that i decided to put my studies put my time into uh, understanding more understanding how to better manage um our resources that that we have around us Speaking of high school, uh, which high school did you go to? So I actually went to Auckland Girls Grammar. Um, I was there all the way from third form to seventh form. Um, but, you know, every summer holiday break, I would always be back home in the Cook Islands. And it was that time spent back home that really drew me back to want to come back and work um, here in the Cook Islands and ever since finishing university um, I haven't felt the need to to come back to New Zealand at all. I'm really enjoying um, the work that I'm currently doing here. Uh, now in those visits back home, uh, as you've already mentioned, uh, the environment was, was something that you were concerned with uh, even growing up. Were you seeing the effects of um, climate change uh, pollution on uh, your own environment there in the Cook Islands in those early years as you were traveling to and from the Cook Islands as a young student? Yeah, um, you know, every Pacific Islander has this connection with the marine life. Um, we rely on our marine environment for food, so it is a special um, place for us. And I used to love going out in our lagoons. Um, snorkeling and um, being with my aunties out on the reef and, and getting seafood for us. And with time, definitely, I noticed that there was big changes, big changes in terms of the abundance of uh, marine life that I was seeing had dropped drastically. The, the colours were starting to change. It wasn't as colourful as it used to be. Um, it started to look more, more sad and dim. Um, and to think that I saw that in my young years of life, I think it's quite scary to think um, I've still got another good 50 years, I hope, um, and what changes might happen in then. And that time um, is quite daunting. Uh, now tell us about the Upikaria Society. Uh, tell us about the work there. So at the Upikaria Society, um, we're a busy little environmental NGO. Um, we have a small team, a small team of about four of us, um, but we cover five strategical areas, um, which definitely keeps the job interesting and diverse on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, those areas include waste management, biodiversity, 
um, youth working at, with our schools, going into our schools, doing awareness raising work in our schools. Um, Eco-sustainable development, so that's the area of seabed mining um, and per sane fisheries, so those economic development opportunities uh, that we have. And finally, climate change, which has become a big area throughout the whole of the Pacific, um, with lots of funding opportunities being uh, made available in that area. Uh, now knowing uh, the effect of your own knowledge of the changes in the sea, uh, how important is that work that you do in the schools in terms of raising awareness among our uh, young people growing up? I think it's uh, very important. I see um, a lot of hope in our youth today. Um, I think our youth are are going to grow up and be the change that we need to to move away from um i hate to say it but this destructive um direction that we're currently going down um our youth are like sponges as well and they're, they're very keen they're very keen to learn um these new things especially in our environment today and if it involves going out and into our lagoons all of that learning by doing um, work makes it super fun for them and it's something they can touch and it's tangible you can feel it um, so our youth and, and the school work we do there, uh, 100%. I love it. I love it so much. Waste management. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a growing concern and an issue for our uh, Pacifica communities. I myself uh, remember growing up uh, and never seeing polystyrene in uh, the Pacific Islands. All our foods would be packaged in leaves and natural resources that you could chuck in the backyard and they would just, you know, uh, compost away. Uh, but now more and more, it is a big issue, especially for our small islands where uh, getting rid of uh, plastics is very, very difficult. How are you dealing with that? Waste management is probably the biggest issue here in the Cook Islands and throughout the whole of the Pacific region. Um, but whether it is a priority for our governments to want to take action, probably not. Because um, when you think about waste, it's a, it's really a, a throwaway culture. You you throw it away. You don't even worry about what the end of life process of, of this object that you've just thrown away is. So it's like an out of sight, out of mind uh, culture, which is not sustainable at all. Um, so how, how we are dealing with it is through a number of ways. One, going into the schools um, and, and talking about this issue of, of plastics in general. Um, plastics, you know, it's durable, it lasts forever. Uh, and and we, we don't have the infrastructure here in the Cook Islands to properly recycle and deal with it. So it does end up just staying in our landfill. And, and I like what you said, you know, back in your time, you had the natural uh, resources around you to act as plates um, and that can degrade. But, you know, another example of us um, relying on Western products like plastics, the convenience of plastics um, is, is not, you know, a, a sustainable mindset um, for us at all. Um, the cooks though, I think we're, we're quite, fortunate we have a, a really good infrastructure um, Cook Islands team that are wanting to build new policies to reduce the amount of plastic waste that is coming into the Cook Islands so actually putting a ban onto that um, and I think you know that top-down uh, powers is, is probably going to be the key the key uh, operation needed to to solve this this big problem that we have. Uh, how how responsive, uh, you've already mentioned there that they are looking at putting in laws uh, to ban uh, uh, plastics. How responsive has uh, government been uh, to the issues uh, as you see them? I would say, you know, it's taken time. It's taken time to put the pressure on government to start recognising that we need to start making waste a priority. Um, I feel priority areas have been given to potential economic um, drivers, such as seabed mining, which I'm sure we will talk into. And then we have the real issues like waste management, which is just um, being put down at the back burn. But, you know, with pressure that has been put on by, by people and NGOs, um, we are starting to see this hazardous waste management bill um, 
be put together to be finally tabled in Parliament. Um, so it has taken time um, and pressure, but I think we, we were slowly getting there here in the Cooks. Now, uh, do tell us about, is it the Suwaro campaign? Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Definitely. So uh, for those um, who don't know about Suwaro, the Cook Islands, we have 15 islands all together and Suwaro makes up one of the 15. It is our national um, park. Two rangers live on this uh, island and it is a popular site for passing yachts um, that come from the Hiti to Samoa. They tend to stop into Sawaro and, and check out the beautiful um, biodiversity that is over there in this pristine, untouched environment. Um, Sawaro is a popular breeding, nesting site, site for seabirds. There's um, thousands of sooty terns, the taro bird, um, frigate birds nesting. Um, and unfortunately, this island has uh, got rats on a couple of the islets of Sawaro. So the, the TIS team, um, thanks to skills we've learned from BirdLife International, have been a part of rat eradication projects. So the Sawaro campaign is all about going to Sawaro and to complete a rat eradication project to finally get rid of um, those last remaining rats that we have on our National Marine Park. Um, to bring Saguaro back to that um, pristine biodiversity where we get rid of our invasive uh, rat species so that our seabirds can have um, a better, a good chance of, of, um, of nesting. Is uh, Saguaro, you, you mentioned that uh, they have two ranges on there. Is it populated? No, no. So um, it is just our two rangers that live on Saguaro and they live there for six months um, of the year during the non-cyclone season. And then once October hits, we bring our rangers back um, to keep them safe from potential cyclones that might come through. And uh, how's the uh, rat uh, eradication uh, program coming along? Where are you uh, with that? Yes, so right now um, we're in the midst of uh, putting the program together and trying to get back up to Sawaro. We're currently fundraising. Um, we're not relying on donor aid to, to go up this time because this job needs to be done really quickly. So we're relying on um, donations from our people, um, from those in the Cook Islands here and, and over in New Zealand to help us reach our goal of 50,000 um, New Zealand dollars. Uh, to get up to Sawaro. So it takes about six days um, to travel from Raratonga to Sawaro by boat. And this time round, we will be going up via Marumaru Atua, which is our traditional waka. Um, so we're, we're going into partnership with our traditional waka to, to go up there. We find, you know, it's a sustainable way of um, aligning these, these conservation projects together. So what a neat way to um, do a rat eradication project and incorporate our marumaru atua in as well. Uh, so we're halfway there in our donation-wise, I should add, halfway there. Uh, speaking of donations, uh, how can we uh, in the diaspora uh, help with the work that you are doing there on the ground? So yes, definitely donations will go a long way in um, not only just the Sawaro campaign, but also all of the work that the Apokaria Society does and um, the Cook Islands diaspora community in New Zealand can help by visiting our webpage, um, tiscookislands.org. Um, and we have a, a donation uh, tab over there, which will give you the steps um, on how you can help um, donate to the Sawara campaign or any of the other work uh, that we do. Wonderful. So TIS is short for Te Ipukarea Society, I'm guessing, uh, Alana. One, yes. <clears throat> well, uh, Te Ipukarea Conservation Program Manager, Marine Biologist and former Miss Cook Islands, Alana Matamaru-Smith, thank you for your time. Thank you for the work that you're doing. And I'm sure our producer, Ina, will put a link uh, to your website 
when we post this interview online. Me taki ma'ata. Thank you, Ete. Kakite. Kakite. You're listening to Early Edition with Air Te 531 PI, bringing Pacific people together. If you've just joined us and you want to see that interview in its entirety, you can visit our 531 PI Facebook page and watch it there. 21 minutes past 11 o'clock, our news in Cook Islands, Māori, coming up at half past 11.